we were talking in the green room beforehand. So whereabouts in Australia are you? I'm in sunny Melbourne at the moment, in our summer. You are in your summer and we're in our winter. We've had horrendous storms and you guys have been barking on the beach and enjoying your Christmas in a pair of shorts. That must be great. It is good. It is good to have a warm Christmas. We've had a fair share of storms as well, actually, this summer. But one year I do plan to have a white Christmas somewhere. So I, I might be coming to visit sometime soon. I wouldn't come here. We just seem to get wind and rain. We don't seem to get snow. So it's weird because obviously Nathan has started his next day and I'm just finishing mine. It's always difficult to try and find a window of opportunity to, to talk to people. So I'm delighted that we've, we've found a window to, to be able to talk. I know that Nathan was quite happy to jump on a call at five in the morning, but I managed to throw three hours on the time. So we're talking, I think it's nine o'clock for me in the morning for you. That's right. Yes. It was very, very kind of you. Thank you. So if, if one of us looks and sounds battered and one looks fresh, that's why, why there's that kind of disparity between us. So. So Nathan, you've been in, in this industry for what seems like an eternity. I think you started in 1990s. Kind of walk me through why you ended up getting into the, the digital marketing space in the first place. Yeah, it does feel like a while. It certainly, it certainly turned me gray, I think. So, so I'm 47 at the moment and I started in 95, which was pretty much a year out of university. But the reason I love the digital and online space was when I was a kid in, in school, my dad he was a computing teacher at school and we always had a computer at home. And I remember when the, he showed me the internet, which was with an old dial up modem, it was so slow. And when he clicked on a web page and said, if you click this link, the next page you see is going to come from Finland or somewhere in Europe. And it absolutely blew me away. And ever since then, I was sort of, sort of been hooked on the internet, whether that's online publishing or marketing or e-commerce for a long time now and, and, and software. So I, I knew that. It was, as soon as I left school, I wanted to do an information technology university course, which I did. And yeah, basically went straight into a, a tech job after that. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember I got into it. I, I was working in insurance and hated insurance and I was looking for an opportunity and I got the opportunity to kind of be a sales manager for a web design company. Um, and then obviously we built all these websites and people were like, what do I do now? And, and I said, well, we need to do web marketing. And they said, well, what the web marketing? And I really had no clue. So I had to kind of learn very quickly about SEO and then paid media kicked in and everything else. You know, back then it, it, most, most things were really kind of still done on dial up. And um, I used to, at home, I used to regularly run up a 1500, 2000 US dollar a quarter bill on dial up. It was just insane the amount of time that I was spending on it. I mean, it, it was always one of those things you download a picture of a car and it would take 15 minutes to down yeah. kind of a JPEG of a car. <laughs> Crazy. Line, line by line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh. I, re I remember it. When we first, I'll go for another one. <laughs> when we first started at university, we actually designed a few websites for, for local businesses and we, I think we used a very, very early version of Microsoft front page, or I'd just do it in a text editor doing HTML. And, um, just as uni kids, we used to sell these websites for a hundred dollars an hour is what we would charge our time for, which we thought was amazing back in the, in the nineties. And, uh, but it was a big thing to have a new website launch. So we did a, a website for the local member of parliament and uh, they did a launch day for the website and the premier of Victoria, Jeff Kennett came and launched the website. So I got to meet the premier of Victoria and and all this sort of thing back in 97 or 98 or whatever that was. So yeah, but it, yeah, those were the days. It was definitely the wild west. It was all, it, I, I always kind of think of it a little bit like looking back, I yeah. was a bit like the emperor's new clothes. There was so many things that you did. I mean, you'd say to people, oh, you need a website and you oh. need homepage and you need a contact page and a page with a map on so people can get directions and, you know, people phone, you know, all your yeah, yeah. sales people have business cards and they have the website address on it. So if they ask you for information, rather than telling them the information, send them to your website. I, I, I always remember in, in the web design company that we had, we employed two people. Right? It wasn't just one person, two people, right? And their job was to refresh the pages by clicking the F5 key, right? Because we had a counter at the bottom that said how many hits, to, oh, right. of, <laughs> in, enhancing the number of hits to the page. And then somebody showed me a way how you could do it, I think with JavaScript, so you can kind of have it automatically have start at whatever number, rent it, whatever. So those two people lost their jobs, unfortunately, you know, but it, yeah, right. it was, it was certainly, absolutely, but, but it's again, for, so for me, it's been a really, in a really enjoyable, fun kind of experience to kind of be there right at the very kind of beginning of what, what we kind of know of today as digital marketing. Um, so it's obviously you, 
like I said, you had a, a, an early start. But where did you kind of progress from there? How did you kind of get to where you are now? So I, I went to work for a, a large corporate business called Orica, and they own Dulux Paints and Orica Chemnet, the chemicals business. And I, I basically worked there for two, or about three years in total. That I really didn't like the corporate world a lot, and I, I looked around at a lot of the guys who were working next to me, and they'd been in the same job for twenty years, and that just. I just couldn't, under, I could not fathom doing that. So I, I was always looking for new things to learn new things. I joined their e-business team. I worked on some big e-business, e-commerce projects. They call it e-business in the corporate world. And at that time, because I was into, I love my cars, always have loved cars. I'd found a website called autospeed.com and it was an Australian based website, but it was really quite busy, it had a lot of traffic and really busy forums. And so I met a couple of guys on there. We we did car catch-ups and things, and um, eventually I started a small side business importing performance cars from Japan, like Nissan Skylines and Supras and this sort of thing, with a bloke that I met on these forums. And uh, yeah, we sort of uh, approached the, the owner of this business and, and said, hey, can we advertise our cars on your website and we'll do a sort of a commission deal? This was my business idea. And they got us in to have a chat, and I remember it was... They said, yeah, we, we're in this house, the third garage door to the left. And uh, I turned off at someone's house. There was a proper startup. They were literally in a garage with a couch, a couple of computers, and running this website with, I think at the time, two or three or 400,000 visitors a month. It was quite decent traffic for the time. Yeah. And they said, come and work with us. So, yeah, yeah, that's sort of how I got started in like the startup sort of software online at the coalface sort of job. And um, I've been there ever since. I've worked with the same, the same business partner. We've done lots of different things together. But I'd like you to be starting at the very beginning when you could game AltaVista and spam it with keywords and, and get the top ranking for, for terms pretty quickly if you knew what you were doing all the way through to now where we're, the system, the industry is far more, far more mature and complex. Yeah, I, I always remember when people used to say to me, what do you do for a living? Because people would always say to me, Mm. You work with computers, right? And I'm thinking, well, I don't, again, I, I looked around and I thought, we don't have any more different computer equipment than they would have in a doctor's surgery or you know, any, any office. <laughs> the same amount of computers and equipment that we had, we were just d doing different things on it. But mm. I was remember people, people used to say to me, yeah. so what is it you do for a living? And I used to say, I fuck with Google because for, for me, it was like they, they started in 97, right? And they were very keen to kind of work with with agencies, certainly I had a paid search agency. They were really keen to kind of get us to spend money with now and think, well, you know, yeah, we, exactly. we were sort of the established business and they were the, just a fledgling startup at that particular point in time. Right? So they were desperate for us to spend money with, the, with them. I and mean, obviously they evolved and everything. And I always kind of say that, that when you look at a Google um, employee, that you have this sort of pre-IPO Googlers and the post-IPO Googlers and they're very different groups of people, right? Because obviously yeah. the pre-IPOs, there are yeah. a lot more freedom that, that the post IPO Googlers don't have. And, and for me, I think it's a bit of a shame that, that, that a lot of those, I mean, most of the pre IPO Googlers that I, I know have gone on to do amazing things in, in all sorts of different, uh, sphere, you know, but most of the kind of post IPOs, you, they kind of come into your life for a short period of time and then they go off because they get out of that we had pre IPO. And for me, I think that's a bit of, yeah, it's a different sort of business. Hmm. Um, so yeah, we, I remember we, sorry, uh, anyway. carry on. I was going to say, we, we first started using Google very, very early as well. We were, we would optimize our websites for Alta Vista at the time, which was sort of the leading search engine, at least in this region, but I think in the U S as well. And then when Google came around, we realized that you couldn't game it quite so easily. So we spent a fair bit of time trying to understand it, trying to get our sites to rank well. And we had an early relationship with them in Australia, but they, they, they wanted us to market with them. So we had a, an AdWords account with them which was still well before they had Australian dollar billing. So we had a US dollar AdWords account from I think the late nineties and we spent quite a bit of money with them back in the day. And uh, yeah, you had a, like you said, you'd have a, a contact and you, you knew that person, you had a relationship, they were a different team, they were a bit more entrepreneurial and wanting to help businesses. I think they were a little bit more of an altruistic business back then. Yeah, it's definitely changed these days. Yeah. And, and again, I think so much of it, I, I would kind of tell the story of I helped Google build my client center, Google ads editor, because they would, they would have engineers mm. kind of come to the, come to the UK from, um, you know, from the States 
they would invite agencies in and they would say, how can we make your life better? And we used to just sort of sit there in a bit of a round table and say, well, it would really be good if we could do this and this and this. Right? And one of the situations that was happening a lot sort of backwards and forwards to, to various other parts of the country and, and, and also overseas, I said, I'd say it would be really good if we had a tool that we could kind of download accounts into, right? make some changes if we happen to be on a plane or something. So make some changes and then when we got to the other end, plug it into a computer, go back onto the internet and upload it all to the back into the interface. And that was kind of the the mm. initialization of Google as editor, right? I mean, I would say to people, I helped a bit right. build Google as editor, but that, that was just my, yeah. <laughs> tool. my yeah. client center. I mean, I always remember we used, we used to have like an awful lot of clients and every single client had a username and a password to log in. It's just a nightmare having to log out, log back into another account. So you've got 50, 60, 70, yeah, yeah, yeah. having to do that. I said, it would be really good if we just had one sort of drop down where you could just choose a particular account from a drop down list and then separation between the people that were using their sort of tools on a daily basis versus the people that kind of worked in engineering. The engineers will always just come up with what they think is best. And I think getting the feedback from people yeah, who yeah. use the tools on a daily basis is so much better to kind of have. I think, I think that's. One of the things that we learned early on as well in our business when we, we started developing our own software was that sometimes what we thought would be a good solution for a customer didn't necessarily come out as being true. And all of our e-commerce experience ourselves really helped us build our shipping software over the last five to 10 years because we were retailers. We knew how to build a solution for this specific problem because we had that problem. So it becomes difficult when someone, like you say, is engineering a product for a solution, but the engineering team doesn't have that experience in yeah, what, what the, the, the problem they're trying to fix. They don't understand really how it's supposed to work. So that experience is super useful. It's, it's encouraging that Google used to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I've that, gone through the same, they don't <laughs> now. the same issues. They myself. pretty much can do their own thing and right. introduce whatever they want and just try and spin it in a way that makes it sound like it's fantastic. But in a lot of cases, it's not that case that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. True. And I, I think for the benefits of people listening in on the podcast, I actually met Nathan, I think for the first time in the Gold Coast in Australia. So I was at a conference down there. I think that. Yeah, I think so. That would have been yeah, some time ago now, yeah. but yeah, e-commerce conference in the Gold Coast. And, and again, for, for me, that, that was, that was a, an amazing opportunity to kind of like go to a new continent, meet new people um, and see how things are done in a different way. Uh, and we had lots of good conversations. I obviously watched Nathan present. And at the time I, I, I you were kind of presenting yourself as working with costumes.com.au, which I think was a kind of fancy dress company. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was our, our own our own business that we started in about 2009. And before that, we'd been Magento partners, to building Magento websites. And um, we wanted to do something different. And we chose to go back into e-commerce and so we started that website and we only just actually sold it a month ago, but yeah, we built that website, won a bunch of awards with it, did a lot of SEO and PPC work for it all internally. So I've, I think my presentation was on SEO and migration or something like that. So yeah, I, mean, I, I remember that well. I was always curious when, when people have a business that is so dramatically focused on a very short space of time. I mean, obviously costume uh, world, I mean, I know that. At the moment, there's the world darts going on and lots of people kind of go to that and you have the rugby sevens and all that sort of stuff. But generally speaking, mm -hmm. I think what tends to happen is people will kind of get costumes for Halloween and pretty much, right? So how, how did that kind of like, how did that manifest itself in terms of your stress levels and everything else? It must have been hugely stressful to kind of short bursts of massive amounts of traffic and revenue. And, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was... It was interesting. We sort of kind of fell into it because we were doing, we, we had a number of e-commerce businesses at the same time. So I think at the point we had a, we'd just sold an online fishing business that we'd built up on eBay. We, we had a musical instruments business. We imported our own brand from China, some electronics and, and something else. And this other little thing, which is like a lingerie costume sort of business. And we picked that one because we saw another competitor in Australia had started a costume business and we had easy access to supply, supplier information, data, which we thought would be great for SEO to help build the site. So we're thinking more from, I guess, a technical point of view. But we were, at that time, we were just, let's throw something at the wall and see if it sticks. And this business did seem to, to grow fairly quickly. I think we doubled in revenue every year for the past 
the, for the first five years, something like that. But what we found was that in America and maybe in the UK, I'm not too sure about your market because we don't sell there, but there was a really big peak for Halloween and then not much at all for the rest of the year. Whereas in Australia, there's much more of a culture of maybe an 80s dress up party or a 70s party, or there were big constant sales all year. And the Halloween peak, although it was there, was not quite as dramatic as in the US. So, and we, we discovered other, other things as well, like schools would have a book week parade. I think you guys might have a, a sort of a yeah. book week yeah. in the UK as well. Yeah. No, yeah. So see, every, when every we school dresses, Harry Potter, right? So they kind of like, yeah, yeah, basically Harry Potter was massive for us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Harry Potter. But yeah, we, and we, we, we didn't think book week was a thing. We didn't know when we started this business, we just saw this big bump of sales in August in our country uh, for book week. And we had to ask customers, why are you buying all these Harry Potter costumes? And they're like, oh, it's book week. Well, like, okay. So when we actually optimized. Uh, our traffic and did some work on SEO and the term book week and book week 2015 and whatever, all of a sudden our book week sales became bigger than our Halloween sales. And that's when we realized that there was a lot of demand there and a lot of people searching for these terms in Google that we just really had no idea about. So that's when we realized that the market was probably bigger than we thought for that business. And that's when we decided to change the name to costumes.com.au. We had a, just a generic name before that. So we went out, we bought the domain, we migrated the website. We thought we'd re-engineer it in Magento. And I think that's the presentation I did in the Gold Coast was about moving to a new domain name, migrating all of our URLs and how we had saw a, a decent increase in traffic at the time, probably because of that domain name, yeah. costumes.com.au, which was a pretty good one. Yeah, so we were we were surprised. It was still peaky. Like there was certainly some challenges in ordering stock. But probably less peaky you know, things like that. Yeah, but, but yeah, US we got or the UK. Yeah, I think so. And at, but at the same time, we also had our our shipping platform, our SaaS business, that was slowly growing in the background as well. So um, that's now overtaken um, the the retail business. But so, so obviously, so we did have a sort of backup there. You mentioned there you run a shipping SaaS business. I've been talking to a couple of the guests I've had, and we talked a little bit about COVID and the impact it had. What did COVID have in terms of impact yeah. on your business? Good question. As, as you could imagine, well, firstly, I'll go back a step. In, in Australia, we had some pretty aggressive lockdowns and shutdowns of business and that sort of thing. I think you guys did in the UK as well, but in Victoria, where I am in particular, I think we had some of the world's longest and strictest sort of lockdowns. And what that meant was that People couldn't go outside for more than an hour a day. They you couldn't get together in groups. So as you can imagine, our costume business revenue dropped by, I think it was 80% overnight. It was, it was a bit shocking actually. That was in, I think early February in 2020 from memory. And at the time we were like, oh, geez, what, what are we going to do here? And what's the government going to do to try and help business? And it turned out that the government did introduce a program to help us called JobKeeper to pay staffed to so unfortunately that particular episode of bad decisions with jim banks with nathan huppets i had to cut it short because unfortunately nathan had a few technical issues at his end when he was uploading his video to the cloud so i'm going to get nathan back to talk to us again because i really enjoyed the conversation with him i thought he had some really insightful stuff to, to say uh so thank you nathan for being on the show and uh, i look forward to having you on as a guest or a podcast episode in the future.